the success that you have with intermittent fasting has a lot to do with the foods that you eat after you fast. So in this video, we're gonna break down what foods you need to have and what foods you should not have and make it straightforward and easy for you to implement today. Hey, Wellness Warrior, I'm Dr. Zorowski, and one of the top questions you ask me is, what do I eat after fasting? Now, this is a really interesting topic because a lot of the success that you have with fasting will hinge right around this information. But here's what I think is important too, is I think that it's important to know what to do, but not make it so complicated that you're kind of just stuck in your path and can't move forward. So I wanna make sure it's crystal clear as to what I use with my patients, what I use clinically in order to help people break their fast and the methods that we go about implementing. So we're gonna talk about 16 and eight. We're gonna talk about one meal a day a 48 hour water fast and also a three day water fast. We'll kind of talk about each one and how I view them personally. Now, 16 and eight, intermittent fasting and also one meal a day. We'll talk about those two together because the same rules apply. And because the reality is, is there's not that long of a fast. And so when doing 16 and eight, one of the things that I like to do first in order to break my fast is to have a coffee. It's something I enjoy. Some people it's tea, it could be green tea, black tea, but I use coffee and I'll put MCT and collagen in them. I like to have the MCTs for the you know uh, energy, for the brain support, and also the collagen in order to help keep my joints healthy. So I use both of those. If you wanna learn more, just ask in the comments below, we'll get you information on uh, the particulars of that. Now, when we eat and break our fast, one of the things that we're gonna focus on is fats and proteins, okay? I don't care which one goes into your mouth first. The reality is those are the two macros that you really wanna focus on. And then what you do is eat carbs last. Now, why would you do that? Well, it's because the research shows is that when you consume carbs first, it spikes your blood sugar higher and also for a longer duration of time. So therefore, if we wanna keep our blood sugar low, which that's one of the things that we're doing with intermittent fasting is trying to drive our blood sugar down and also become more insulin sensitive. If we want to accomplish that, we just have carbs last, fats and proteins first, okay? And the same thing goes for one meal a day. Now, when consuming food during one meal a day, I'll also mention you don't have to consume your meal within a half hour period, okay? A lot of people who get into the one meal a day thing think it's literally you know, a half hour, 45 minutes, that's the only meal time you get and that's it. I like to consume my meals on one meal a day over a two hour period, okay? Because one of the things you want to do when you're doing either 16 day or one meal a day is make sure that you're not overloading your digestion, okay? So you wanna make sure you're chewing your food well. You don't wanna go into these meals hungry, starving, just scarf down, don't chew it well. Your digestion will thank you if you take it easy and chew your food well. And then the other thing that I wanna focus on too, if we're doing 16 and eight, is we wanna have a smaller lunch, because you're probably eating lunch and dinner, smaller lunch, and then a bigger dinner. The smaller lunch, the whole purpose of that is just so that you actually stay energized throughout the whole day. If you have a big lunch, it will just wear you down and steal your energy. So smaller lunch, and then when you have your bigger dinner, it activates your parasympathetic nervous system, which actually makes you a little bit sleepy. And that's a good thing because we're assuming that you're having that big meal at night, okay? And then once again, one meal a day, spread it out over a two hour period, chew your food well, and then go slow because it's very difficult for your digestion to take all of that food for one day and just slam it into 30 minutes. And the reality is, is if you are doing that, there's a good likelihood that you're not getting proper macros and everything. So spread it out a little bit. Now let's talk about the 48 hour and the three day water fast. Okay, this is important because these two have a lot of healing benefits to them. And so we wanna make sure that we approach breaking the fast properly. And I put them together because really the same rules will apply. Now, whenever doing the 48 hour or three day water fast, I look at this as an opportunity for healing. So I think about the foods that I'm going to consume and how can we actually use that as an opportunity to further heal, right? Because if you're doing this fast right here, we're focused on reducing inflammation, activating autophagy. We're focused on improving gut health, improving brain health, literally improving every aspect of our health, mobilizing fatty acids for energy so that we actually have fat loss, okay? So as we jump into this fast, 
we come off it and some of the things we look to is things like bone broth, okay? You wanna go really light when breaking this fast simply because your digestion is more in a rested state, okay? You haven't eaten anything, it hasn't been really doing anything. It actually kind of like shedding is lining a little bit and it's in a state of healing. So we don't wanna go in there with a pizza and a whole bunch of junk food. We wanna go in there with food that heals. Bone broth happens to be one of them, very good, beneficial, uh, broths for your gut. You could also use a vegetable broth and you could even use some green juice here as well. If you wanted to juice some vegetables, that's not a bad way to go either. Now, the next thing we want to do is have some good nutrient dense veggies. Okay. These actually work as a prebiotic in this particular case, but we don't want to consume them raw. We actually want to steam them because it's too hard on our gut to have to break down those raw veggies at this time. So steam them. And then from there, the next food that we want to focus on is fermented foods. As I mentioned, this is a healing opportunity because I specifically work with a lot of people in order to improve their gut health. One of the things I look at is how can we actually improve the diversity of the actual probiotics within the gut? Well, using fermented foods like sauerkraut, kimchi, fermented pickles, and any other fermented food that you can think of is a good way to go to help improve the probiotic diversity within the gut. And then of course, we're using the cruciferous vegetables, as I mentioned, as good prebiotics. So next thing on our list here is gonna be soups, okay? Getting a bone broth based soup with some proteins and lots of veggies in it is awesome because whenever we're eating any veggies, when breaking our fast after this big long one here, we always want them to be steamed so that they break down well. And obviously within a soup, that's the case. Then fatty meats and also fatty fish. You want a good grass fed meats and also fatty fish because it's loaded with omega-3, DHA, all the things that we want during this time. So whenever, we are doing this fast, we're focused on healing. And if you're somebody who is having a lot of gut issues and you're doing this in order to improve your gut health, you know, you can take a probiotic during this time, you can focus on um, even during the fast, taking some probiotics in order to help improve diversity as well. Sometimes during the 48 hour or three day fast, we even use some cleansers to help kind of clear the yeast and all the uh, bacterial overgrowth out of the gut because it's very beneficial and opportunistic time to get that stuff out of there. So once again, my mind always goes towards gut healing when doing these fasts, but we do it for a whole host of reasons. Now, beyond that, one of the things that we want to do is we want to use this fast as a reset, okay? Because it happens to everybody. We get in a position where we're starting to consume too much food, we're overeating, we're getting into the wrong foods, we're starting to eat more sugars, we're starting to eat too many carbs, whatever it is for you. You're eating that comfort food that you really shouldn't be eating because it's really unhealthy for you. This fast serves as a mental reset in order to get your mind right around food and healing again, so that you can get on track with eating the pr proper foods, the proper amount of foods calorie wise, making sure that you're hitting your macros right, and then doing all the right things in order to make sure that you're healing your body and doing it naturally. And then of course, we do this, we give it a couple weeks, maybe a month or two, we do it again. And then throughout the year, as we continue to implement these fasts, we find ourselves in a position where we are constantly pushing the healing in our body, and that's excellent. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you like this one, I really think you'll like this one over here next.